Hi, this is Manan V. In this episode, I'll show you how to create this text displacement effect in LumaFusion. This effect mimics the displacement mapping feature available in some video editing tools and takes elements and inspiration from the way it is implemented in those tools. At a high level, displacement mapping is a method where different parts of an image shown over a textured surface are displaced based on the texture of that surface. Specifically for the effect in this tutorial, this allows displaying text on top of the surface in a way that looks as if the text was an integral part of that surface. For this tutorial, the text displacement will be based on the brightness of the textured surface. As you can see in this simplified example, the size of the text increases when it is over brighter areas of the background video and decreases to its normal size when it is over darker areas. Let's jump into LumaFusion and I will explain how the method works as we go. We start with a new LumaFusion project already having the video that will be used as a background placed in the timeline. We are going to use the ripples in the water to displace the text. Add a title above the background video. Expand it so it has the same duration as the background video below it. Edit the text and go to the title tab if you're not already there. Write the text of your choice. Don't make it too long. Choose a font that is bold and has round edges. Arial Round Empty Bold works great for this example. Keep the text centered in the middle of the screen. Set the size of the text to about 75% of the size you estimate that you will need. I'm using size 190. The face color of the text should be white with 100% opacity. The edge color should be white as well and also with 100% opacity. The edge width should be set to 2. Make sure that the text doesn't have a shadow. Now, tap on the Frame and Fit tab. Increase the size of the title and position it as needed. In this case, I'll increase the size of the text to take advantage of the screen width and I'll place it just in the path of the water ripples. In the next steps, the text will slightly grow, so keep some extra space around it. Exit back to the timeline. Move the title to the main track and place it as the first clip in the timeline. Clone the title five times, placing the cloned titles in the main track, one after the other, so now you have six identical copies of the same title. We'll call the first of the six titles the baseline. It has a special meaning that I will explain later on. For now, color tag the baseline title yellow to make it easier to spot. Edit the title next to the baseline and tap on the title tab if you're not already there. Change the edge width from 2 to 3. Exit back to the timeline. One after the other, edit the remaining four titles, changing the edge width to 4, 5, 6 and 7 correspondingly. This is how it looks so far. Now let's define the displacement map, which is the texture surface that will affect the displacement of the text. LumaFusion doesn't natively support displacement mapping, so we'll need to get a bit creative. Place the background video situated at the end of the timeline right above the last title.
The purpose of the next steps is to isolate bright areas in the video and displace them in white over areas where there is text, while the remaining areas will be displayed in black. Edit the background video. Tap on the Frame and Feed tab. Scroll through the time transport controls to a point where the water is rippling at its peak. In my case, at the 9 seconds point. Now change the blend mode from normal to silhouette luma. Tap on the colors and effects tab, select the palette section and add the original preset. Start by adjusting contrast all the way to the right and saturation all the way to the left. Adjust gamma almost all the way to the left as well. Scroll back to the top of the preset settings and make sure that the brightness is still zero. Start adjusting the level controls to the left until only a few pixels are visible in white as shown. Increase the brightness to a point where if you play the video, some parts of the text are identifiable. In my case, I'll be setting brightness to 035, and this is how it looks. Exit back to the timeline. Clone the background video and place it on top of the second title as shown. Edit the background video you just cloned. As before, scroll through the time transport controls to a point where the water is rippling at its peak. Select the same point in time that you selected previously. Increase the brightness to the point where, if you play the video, most parts of the text show, but not all of them. In my case, I've set the brightness to 055, and this is how it looks. So the brightness range goes from 055 in the second title to 035 in the sixth and last title. Keep this brightness range in mind. Exit back to the timeline. Clone the copy of the background video you just edited and place it on top of the third title. Edit the background video you just cloned. Decrease the brightness, making sure that it is within the brightness range established earlier, meaning less than the brightness of the previous background video, that was set to 055, but more than the last clip in the timeline, that was set to 035. I'll set the brightness to 050. Repeat the process for the remaining two titles. I'll be setting the brightness to 045 and 040 correspondingly. This is how it looks so far. Export the project. Now add the video you just exported to the project and place it on the third track above the existing clips. Cut the newly added video using the existing clips as a reference. Notice that the first cut is identical to the baseline. Now, stack the videos you've just cut on top of each other as shown. The first video, which contains the baseline, on the first track, the second video on the second track, and so on, until you have six videos stacked, with the last video being on the topmost track. At this moment, the topmost video 
is the only video that is visible. It shows only a few areas of the text that correspond with the brightest areas of the background video. The text on the topmost video also has the biggest edge size, making it the thicker text and the biggest text size. Going down the stack, each clip adds less brighter areas, meaning additional parts of the text, but with a smaller text size. In the next steps, all the videos in the stack will be merged. The video at the bottom, the baseline, shows the full text using the smallest text size. This will ensure that parts of the text not displayed by any of the videos above it will still be displayed and there will be no holes in the text. Now let's start merging the videos. Edit the video in the topmost track and change the blend mode to screen. Exit back to the timeline. Repeat the process, setting blend mode to screen for all the clips in the tracks. There's no need to touch the baseline clip. This is how it looks after the merge. At this point, you can already see how the fluctuations in the text correspond to the rippling motion of the water in the background video. Before continuing, I would recommend making a copy of the project in case you need to get back to adjust brightness levels in any of the clips. Delete all the clips in the timeline besides the stack of merged videos. Export the project. Create a new LumaFusion project. Add the original background video. Add the video containing the merged text that you just exported just above it. Edit the video containing the text. Change the plain mode to screen. Add the Gaussian 5 effect. And reduce the radius to 2. This will help softening some of the rough edges of the text. Exit back to the timeline. Clone the background video and place it on the third track just above the text. Edit the video you just cloned and change the blend mode to darken. At this point, you won't see any change. Exit back to the timeline. Now, edit the background video in the main track. Tap on the Colors and Effects tab and add the original preset. Scroll to the point where the water is rippling at its peak. Start reducing the brightness until the text is visible as shown. Exit back to the timeline, and we are done. This is the final result. So this is it for this episode. If you liked this video, please consider subscribing to this channel, give it a like, and click on the bell so you're notified when I post new videos. Thank you for watching, stay safe, and I'll see you on the next one.